Hello everybody, I'm Yvette of DIY Uniquely Yvette. Welcome to the channel. Today I have something. It starts out, you think, when you see the template I have, you think, oh, she's just throwing more scroll saw stuff. You're wrong. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not working on a scroll saw this week, but I am working with wood and the final product is going to be so just like, just amazing, okay? I'm so excited the, for how the final product looks. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna look good. I say that every week, but this one is a little different. Wait and see, trust me, wait and see. Wait, look to the end. In fact, go, oh, never mind. <laughs> wait and see, for real, it's, it's going to be so nice, okay? But before we get into it, Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I know you're just watching and you, you're thinking, oh, do I want to subscribe? Yes. The answer is yes. Yes, you do. Subscribe. And you know what? Hit the notification bell so you know when I upload these videos because I will do it every week, okay? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I'll put a video up every week. Thursday, Friday, or it could be Saturday. I don't know, but <laughs> it's going to be. It's going to be every week. If you like this video at the end, hit the thumbs up. Or if you like anything in the video, hit the thumbs up. Comment below and let me know what you think of the outcome. Give me some tips, tricks, suggestions, whatever. Comment below. Thanks. Let's get into the video. Okay. Here's what we're working on today. Look at that. We're working on this butterfly. Um... It's about, I think, two feet wide. And we're going to use these two by fours that are just, you know, left over from some previous project. We're going to distribute them across this butterfly. I'm going to cut these two by fours into one inch strips. And each strip is going to be one of three heights. I think two inch one inch and less than that whatever i'm not sure i'll see when i get it done they're going to be cut into strips so sort of like this one inch wide different heights like this and they're going to be distributed across this piece and then but my first step is to just to cut this wood and get it into the strips i want okay we got a bunch of them cut down these they're all one inch wide for the most part this is two um, one and a half inches high by one inch wide. This is one by one, and this should be, I don't know, half inch by one wide, something like that. And whatever the case may be, when they're all laid out, they're more than enough to cover the butterfly. So we'll just stagger everything, but first sanding. here is just cover the whole butterfly pattern with all the pieces of wood I have and this is basically what I'm going to try to do I have decided I'm going to stain the pieces of wood first before I start cutting them into position I'm just going to estimate because I'm not sure how everything is going to fall so basically I'm going to take a bunch one color a bunch another color a bunch a third color it's going to be three different colors and hope I have enough of each color for the position I want to put them in. The wood into three different piles because I'm going to do three different colors. This pile right here is going to be my uh, Tuscan teal. This pile, this middle pile is going to be the Laguna and this third one is going to be the lime. So I'm going to take them off of the butterfly print and then move that aside so I can paint each one each pile and it's not going to be an exact thing it's just an estimate and I'm hoping that it will all turn out okay yeah. I mean if it turns out I've got too much of a particular color all I have to do is just make some more 
So let me just show you an example of what I'm just going to do. I'm going to keep it kind of watered down. Let me test out this. This is some watered down Tuscan teal. Let me see how it goes. Oh yeah, that's okay. That's what I'm going to do to each piece. So apparently I have to wet the wood first with my spray bottle. And then I can get better results. makes the um, paint act a little a little bit more like a stain. And then if I feel like it's too much on there, I can wet, wipe it down like that. So this is the teal completed. And I need to move on to the uh, Laguna. Okay, so first what I want to do is wet the wood. Just to make the, t the paint take more like a stain. I hope this looks different than the, um, the other one. I mean, I know they're very similar in color. So I'm not sure how it's going to work out. And I want to wipe it down a little bit. I don't want to wipe it down too much. Because I want the color there. And I wipe it to try to get a little bit more uniformity in the color. You know, so it doesn't look like it's clumping up into one location. Like that. And then the next one, like I said, spray down. Dry. And I'm not worrying about the ends because um, I'm going to be cutting them to fit into the pattern. And I could probably do the ends of the painting, I mean of the, the picture afterward, I don't know. The ends just don't matter as much to me right now because I have to cut them. And I'm not sure where they're going to be cut. I'm a little concerned that the um, with the last pile, I only had two of the flat pieces, the, the, the lowest level pieces. I only had two. I don't like that. Might not be enough when I start to do the design. And like, say, you know, say I don't like how this is. I'll just go back over it again because I know that part is going to be on the top and then wipe it like that. And then move on. And I'll continue until I'm done with these. Now we're on the last grouping, which is the lime. So first we wet the wood. We'll start painting it on. I actually don't like it watered down too much because it takes away too much of the green and makes it yellow. So I'm going to try to minimize the amount of water. So here's our three colors. This is the Teal, this is Laguna, and this is the Lime. These two colors are very close, but this is blue and this is green. Anyway, so we're going to start with the Lime, I think. And oh, I need to make sure I keep these on the side I want. So we're going to set everybody else aside and start with the Lime. 
I'm going to take a single piece, let's say this one, and what I'll start doing is I'll line it up with this edge of the butterfly's wing. So I'm going to go all the way down to the other side of the line, of the, the outline. I need to follow the outline. I keep thinking I, find I need to follow the inside, but no, just the outline of the of the butterfly. So I'm going to cut this curve up here and then cut this curve here and then I'll have this, this piece like this. Then the next piece is going to be a different size like this as far as height. I'll cut this curve here and cut this curve here to the outside. And I'll continue on with the next piece like this. I'll cut it right here at this line, cut it to curve at this line. And I'll keep doing them going the same direction one after another and only cutting the edges, the corners, the, the outline. So all of this is going to be cut out to follow the outline of the butterfly's wing. That's the plan. I hope it works. <laughs> I hope I don't screw up and then mess up the wood I prepared, but that's how it's going to start. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about this. I put a thin piece of MDF on the top of my jigsaw and then a thin piece on the bottom and two and, a, and one thin piece on the back. And then I push my C file, this slides forward and back. I pushed it all the way back and then brought it down with it on so it would cut a hole in between so that basically what that would create is a zero clearance place here so when i cut off tiny pieces of my wood um it wouldn't you know if i potentially need a piece that's this small for the butterfly i can cut it off it won't fall down in between this gap and also a part of this setup right here it goes this little piece goes with it back here and this piece here goes to hold down the the piece of wood just in case it's ever too small for me to put my hand right up here to try to hold it i can leverage with this long piece and hold that tiny piece um that tiny piece of wood I'm cutting in place safely. Also, I put some sticky sandpaper around the edge of this hold down piece and some sticky paper here so that when there's a tiny piece of wood on this surface, it doesn't easily slide around on this metal surface of the, um, of the miter saw. So the, there's 120 grit sandpaper here and on both sides of this cut, but not on the cut because you know you don't want it on there where the, the stickiness would get onto your blade and dull it. And on here to keep it down firmly. You know, it doesn't easily slide around. And this back piece gives me a bit more leverage so that I can put more pressure on the front of the stick than the back. And it's been working out great. I'll leave a link below of the video where I learned to do this because, I mean, my excellent explanation is good, but that video where I learned how to do it is very, very good. I'll also leave links below to where I bought this, this sticky sandpaper from Amazon. It comes in a roll. And I just had the MDF just laying around the shop. So I'm going to show you... I've marked the butterfly where the butterfly template goes and I'm going to cut off that angle on this end and this angle on that end. And so see that's why this jig comes in handy where I can just pull, hold it wherever I want to and just cut it at whatever angle I want to safely. Just line it up. Okay like there. And I put this here as close as I need to safely. That's it. 
My piece is still there. And it's cut. Okay, let me show you where I am so far. As you can see, I've done this many pieces on this wing. I'm still thinking about how I can do this last little tiny piece. I'm not sure if you can see it from the angle of the camera. But, okay, I'm going to put a big piece in here. Let me just see if I have any that are long enough. Um, no, still not long enough. So I'll just keep using my big pieces here. And, and what I'll do is try to follow the line. So I'll go actually from the corner of this last piece I placed in here. Mostly I'm going over the shadow because I can't see exactly since they're different heights. I can't see exactly where to put it. So I'm going on the corner of this piece right here. And then I'm going to come down to where I think the line continues like that. And then down here, the, the butterfly is basically on a straight line at, at this particular spot. So I just continue it on. Draw a pencil mark on there. You see there's a line here and a line there. So I'm just following. I'm keeping all the pieces of wood going at a slant this way. And that's what I'll do this slant across the entire butterfly. I realize that you might not be able to see the height, the various heights of the wood. See here. See the various heights. It's three different heights. And it's not easy to see on camera. All right, y'all. I feel like I haven't shown you enough of this project while I'm doing each step. I've got to really get in there close with my head all up in the way <laughs> as I'm drawing the lines of where I need to cut. So, I mean, I don't know. And then once I get the lines on there, I'm doing one piece at a time, take it over to the saw, bring it back, put it in. So it's like set up the camera, show you what I'm doing, do the lines, get my head out the way, show you the line. Stop the camera, go over there, do that, come back, start it up again. Anyway, it's a hassle. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out how to show you everything. So let me just show you what I envision. I've laid out the colored pieces. I've done most of one wing. So I'm going to show you. Oh, uh, Another thing I want to tell you is that I, I wanted this to not have a backing. But now that I look at it, there's like some pieces that are really small slivers on the end. I feel like they might break off if there's not two points of contact. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. This is one wing so far. Looks amazing. And this is how I want like one color here and then the final color over there. But right in here is going to be the body, obviously. Um, that's black, so I'm going to be cutting in there. But this is what I mean by that little sliver that is too thin to just be, you know, glued against this side. I, I think it could break off without any backing, but at least it would be glued from this side and on the back to a board. So I guess I will put a backing on it and a frame for that matter, I guess. I'm so shocked that this tailpiece is so much easier than this one. This one was very, very tricky trying to get things to line up properly. If I knew, I guess if I knew here that this would come straight through or I don't know, realize how I was going to do it, I would have just come straight through with this one, this being one piece out to here, but that doesn't matter to me. This piece See, this is uh, this side is easier. So I have a, the next piece ready to cut. And see, it's going to be just this little piece here. And it's going to go in here. I can't, I can't see how to show you that. 
with the camera in front of me. <laughs> Looking through the camera is hard. But anyway, it's pretty... Oh no, I think it's going here. It's going on this side to match this height. And then this piece. But it's so, so much easier on this side. because I think because of the slant of the wood than on this side. Let me show you the progress. I mean, wow. It, it looks so pretty. <laughs> in my eyes, it looks pretty. I hope in your eyes it looks pretty. And you can see where it's going to go. What I didn't anticipate was see when I cut off having exposed parts like this. I mean, the black body will go in there. But the body, depending on what height it is, it may still show those exposed pieces. So I might go in and touch up those where I cut it off and that's not a big deal but there's the progress of our butterfly I'm going to do a, a couple more lines in here of this color I think and then we'll switch to the final color I finished all the green started into this color the Laguna and now right I think from right here on it'll be teal and this is all we have to do left for the body, I mean for the wings. Then I'll be making some kind of wing shape like his body. So for right here at the top of his body, I'm going to try doing some dowels. I'm not going to curve like this, obviously. I'm just going to have straight dowels with maybe a little wooded bead at the end of them. Okay, for the body, I'm going to use one of these one by ones. And all I'm actually going to do is measure. I'm not going to go about exact shape and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to measure the length of the body, which is about seven and a half inches. And then I'm going to cut this piece off to seven and a half inches. I'm going to sand off all the paint. And then I'm going to sort of uh, like give slight curves to the, I mean, not curves angles at the top to make that narrow and then a steeper angle toward the bottom the body came out perfectly i like it i mean just exactly the way I wanted it to be. And I've got these dowels that I think I've got from Walmart a long time ago. This uh, this skinny little one, I think that's going to be the right side. I have a square one, and I'm going to use the round one. Also, I have these balls that I got from Amazon. I think this pack came with three in it, three different sizes in it. And um, I don't remember which ones I got. I'll leave a link to similar ones below in the in the information section but it's like I said it's three different sizes you have this really tiny size medium size and a little bigger than that I think these are the ones I'm going to use this is the largest size and they're about the same size as the one on the template what I'm going to try to do is saw a hole in each side so that I can stick the antenna in to it a little ways to glue it in. I don't want to just try to surface glue. I want to want it to go in down and down into a little hole. Ooh, that was tough. So now I'm going to do it on the other side. There. And then it'll stick in like this. It's a little off. One is at a weird angle. I cut off the piece I wanted to, or as much as I wanted to on this. It still looks a little weird, but I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to put some hot glue into this hole. Oh, it feels like it's not going in as well as build. And the other side. Ugh. This is a lid. okay. And that's how that looks. And now I'm going to glue the balls on the end. Um, it's got these little holes, but I'm not going to try to fill them. And there's our little butterfly body with antennas. And now I'm going to paint it 
So here's some watered down Laguna paint. And now when this dries, I'm going to start gluing the butterfly to the backing. Okay, let me show you what I've done to make the frame. Across here is 31 inches, and over there are 31 inches. Down here is 26 inches, and the same here. I've also cut, oh, the, the, the width of this is one inch wide by, I think, two and a quarter tall. I've also cut a half inch, one and a half inch by one half inch little sticks here for the inside. I'm going to glue and nail them into this side piece. I've got them on all four sides and they will support the frame. The frame is going to sit snugly against them. It'll be glued against them and then the frame will be here. And so all I have to do with this frame is sand it and then stain it. I'm going with the dark walnut. <music> 